Let me tell you the story of the most expensive one-cylinder dive I have ever done, and then let me also tell you why it was worth every cent. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Divers Ready. My name's James. As always, so fantastic to see all of your smiling faces. I try really hard to balance the content on this channel between education and inspiration. And for me, inspiration means travel. And since it's been a while since Karina and I got any dive travel done, we do have a lot of plans this summer. I thought I would share with you a story of what was actually the most expensive one cylinder dive I've ever done but at the same time was absolutely phenomenal and worth every penny. So this story takes place about five years ago, shortly after Karina and I were married. Uh, Karina, pre-COVID, used to travel an insane amount for her day job and had massed a frankly ridiculous number of miles, points, whatever you want to call them. Since we've been too busy to take a proper honeymoon directly after our wedding, we decided it was time to cash in those chips and rectify that. Now, I know it's a honeymoon cliche, but Karina had never been to Hawaii before. So we both wanted to do some diving, but also enjoy great food, epic scenery, and have a peaceful, relaxing time. So we chose the island of Hawaii, AKA Big Island, home to Volcanoes National Park, which is another thing that Karina and I happen to enjoy together. I would actually go as far to say that the National Park Service is America's equivalent of the crown jewels. I think it's America's greatest achievement, on a personal note. Uh, home of Kona Coffee, and also just some of the most beautiful tropical gardens anywhere in Hawaii, therefore anywhere in America, in my opinion. Um, we get out there, we're having a great time. Everything is perfect. We're doing a lot of shore dives uh, up and down the west coast, uh, around the Kona sort of area. And we're seeing tiger sharks, like just off of the beach. We're hearing a uh, humpback whale song underwater. We're seeing tons of turtles. We're seeing manta rays awesome dives highly recommended and you know we've talked about my love for shore diving in other videos i'll link it up above there but you know we're super relaxed we're on our own schedule and the diving is absolutely phenomenal if we want a couple of beers for lunch that's us done for diving for the day whatever goes goes fantastic now the dive shop that we were using to rent and fill our cylinders for each day's dives were super helpful i couldn't say enough about them absolutely phenomenal um and they were really helpful with like giving us a map of the island and noting where all the different shore diving sites were, how to get in, how to get out. And the young guy behind the counter asked us like, okay, this is all well and good. Go and, you know, go and get your shore dives done. But what are you doing Wednesday night? Okay. Uh, don't know. Probably eating fish tacos and drinking tiki drinks. Probably. I don't know. Uh, he said, well, a couple of spaces have opened up on our Manta night dive. Now, I'd heard of the Manta Night Dive before in diving circles, but I guess I didn't put two and two together and realize that that was what happened at the place we were at, which is unusual. Anyway, he said, trip leaves at sunset. I said, awesome, we're down for that, absolutely. And then he told us the price, and I didn't say an expletive, but I definitely thought of one or two. And I was like, and this is, this is for one dive, right? One cylinder, single tank dive? Yep. Well, okay, when are we next going to be in Kona? Um, so we signed up. We show up Wednesday evening. We get set up in a classroom. And to be honest, the instructor was absolutely phenomenal. Gave a really, really thorough briefing on, you know, manta behavior and biology and how to dive with mantas. Things that I didn't actually know, even having dived with mantas before. It was a really informative talk. Uh, really in-depth. Very happy with that. Uh, and then we go down to the dock. We get on the boat around sunset. We gear up. We do all our pre-dive checks and we get a dive briefing and off we go cruising up the coast of Hawaii uh, as the sun sets and to be honest that view on its own was worth the price of admission I mean even without the dive just a sunset cruise you'd have paid that sort of money so I was I was pretty happy with that so we're chugging along up the coast taking all the colors the ocean absolutely beautiful and we pull into this little bay and tie up to a fixed mooring now 
How this dive works is that their dive masters go down with a crate full of high powered lights, uh, like a milk crate, and they set the crate onto the volcanic rock and point the lights up at the surface. And the divers get in and we head down and you kind of form a semicircle around one side of the crate and you get negative and you're down on the bottom. Now, at this point, I should probably point out, you guys know I have strong feeling about kneeling during doing skills, but this is actually the design of the dive is to be negative and to be as low as possible. And you don't have to worry. There's no coral on these rocks. These are bare volcanic rocks. You do just have to be careful of sea urchins to protect them and obviously yourself. They're spiny and prickly and nasty, but there we go. But there's no coral to be trampled, just to be clear. So we're down there and we get down there and they fire up the lights and all of a sudden there's this column of light lighting up the water and obviously that generates warmth as well which brings in all of the plankton the phytoplankton the zooplankton into that warmth into that light into that nutrient rich water and then you just sit back in the front row and enjoy a ballet of manta rays it is incredible So you spend about an hour down there and all you're watching is these mantas come in and do barrel rolls and swoop and fly over your head and just the most graceful display of pelagic action that you could ever wish to witness. Now there is an ethical question there of course. This is humans messing with nature again. Would the mantas be here if the humans didn't come and set up the lights? Maybe, maybe not. Are we feeding the mantas, disrupting their natural behavior? Well, we're not feeding them, we're not taking the plankton down with us, but we are certainly encouraging a hot spot where feeding happens. So what happens when the divers don't show up and don't bring the lights? A manta's behavior being disrupted, their natural patterns? Are they also providing a considerable amount of manta protection and conservation through awareness and appreciation? Undoubtedly so, yes, 100%. But look, we've talked about these kind of questions before when we talked about shark feeding dives. I'll link the video to that up there somewhere. And my honest opinion here is choose your battles. These guys aren't out hacking mantas to death with boat hooks like you see on commercial fishing vessels. So I don't really have that much of a problem with it at all. All I can say is five years later, I still think about that dive at least once a day. So yes, the most expensive one cylinder dive I've ever done, I'm not gonna quote the price, but you know, it was up there. 
but so worth it. So absolutely worth it. And most of all, the thing I remember about that day and about that dive is the wide-eyed smile on my wife's face. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching as always. This was your Divers Ready video for this week. If you haven't done so already, make your next dive on our subscribe button and we'll see you in the next video. As always, dive safe, dive often.